What would happen if we humans were exposed to outer space naked? Will the body suddenly inflate due to the difference in air pressure and die? Or will it freeze to death from the too cold temperatures of space? If not, would you die of suffocation due to lack of air? In the Marvel film series, exposure to outer space is often portrayed as freezing. So what about the other movies? In the movie, Event Horizon, the body in outer space was suddenly exposed, capillaries became prominent, and blood came out from the mucous membranes of the eyes. In the next movie, Total Recall, if you watch it, your body gets so full that it goes to the brink of exploding. What happens when a person falls into space like this is different for every movie. What would happen in a real situation? First, let's look at the environment of outer space. Outer space is weightless, the temperature is minus 270 degrees, close to absolute zero, and since space is a vacuum, the atmospheric pressure is zero and there is no air. Also, since there is no medium to transmit sound in outer space, even if an accident occurs in the middle of space, no matter how much you ask for help, no sound can be transmitted. Really, space is a completely atrocious environment. Compared to the global environment, there is no other paradise like Earth. Since the space environment is so atrocious, it's hard to imagine what would happen if you went out into space naked. Let's start by looking at the atmospheric pressure in space. The Earth we live on has gravity, and that gravity holds various air together to form the atmosphere. No matter how light the Earth's air is, it has a weight, and the closer this air is to the ground, the more it receives the action of gravity. The farther you are from the Earth's surface, the less the gravitational force is applied to it. This must be natural, right? The lower you go to the center of the Earth, the stronger the gravitational pull. In other words, atmospheric pressure is the pressure exerted by the weight of air. But in outer space there is no gravity, which is why there is no air, and because there is no air, there is no pressure. Of course, it's not that there's no atmosphere at all in space, but the amount is so small that it's almost meaningless, so it's safe to say that the atmospheric pressure in space is virtually zero. The atmospheric pressure on our Earth is one at sea level, but the atmospheric pressure in space is zero. Because of this, some people thought. Because of the difference in air pressure from the outside, it was thought that the body itself would explode in a short time as oxygen etc. escaped from the inside of the body in an instant. But this is never true. One atmosphere at the surface of the Earth and zero atmospheres in outer space. The difference between these two environments is one atmosphere it's a difference, but a difference of one barometric pressure is not that big of a difference in barometric pressure. Let's say a scuba diver over there goes 10 meters underwater. At this time, the water pressure in the sea is two atmospheres. That's one atmosphere higher than the Earth's environment. And let's say the diver comes back to the surface. It changes from an environment of this pressure to an environment of one atmosphere. Now, even if a diver comes out from 10 meters under the sea to the sea level, the divers. All organs burst and the body does not swell. Our bodies are stronger than we think. Also, considering common sense, when the sea creatures that lived below 10 meters came up to the sea level, everyone. It doesn't explode like a blowfish, right? Of course, if we rise to the surface in a hurry without equalizing, because of the rapid change in air pressure a light diver may come. At this time, symptoms are only about ear pain or headache dizziness. But even so, the body doesn't swell to the point where survival is a problem like in the movie. However, very rapid changes in air pressure can cause death. During the 1983 Viper Dolphin Kiln explosion, deep sea divers were exposed to pressures ranging from 9 to 1 atmosphere. There was a time when a pressure of minus 8 atmospheres was applied instantaneously. Four divers died instantly as a result of the accident, but an autopsy showed no external trauma. The autopsy revealed that the divers were exposed to rapid low pressure, all blood being drawn up. It is believed that the body's circulation stopped and he died instantly. However, the body did not swell like in the movie. Then, how about the depiction of the body gradually freezing like in Gao Gao? First of all, even if the temperature of outer space is low, it is true that it is really low. The average temperature of the universe is minus 270.4 degrees Celsius. Absolute zero is minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, so it's only a 3 degree difference. 
So if it's that cold, of course you'll freeze to death, right? However, this idea can also be said to be a little wrong. Because there is no air in outer space, there is little medium to transfer heat to the human body. For example, if you put your hand in boiling water at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, you will get burned right away. But even if you go into a dry sauna at 100 degrees Celsius, you won't get burned right away. In other words, the smaller the medium through which heat is transferred, the slower the heat conduction. In outer space, where there is no medium to transfer heat, there is almost no heat conduction. Most of human heat is released only in the form of radiant heat. Our body temperature doesn't drop as quickly in space as we might imagine. Now, the thermos is a good application of this principle. This thermos bottle has a vacuum between the bottles to prevent heat transfer. Because of this, conduction and convection do not occur, and heat conduction does not occur well, and the temperature of the thermos is maintained. Because of the negative air pressure, the body does not explode and does not freeze to death. So what the hell is going on? I really want to test it myself in space, but it's really frustrating. Still, since we've actually had a few accidents happen in space, we can predict what's going to happen. This is good news for my brother because he doesn't have to run the experiment himself. In 1965, Jim LeBlanc, a spacesuit tester at the Johnson Space Center in the United States, had an accident where he was exposed to low pressure for 15 seconds. But he fortunately only fainted and did not lose his life. There are other cases. On March 18, 1965, Alexei Leonov of the Soviet Union performed the first spacewalk. At this time, Alexei Leonov's mission was to put on a spacesuit and go out into space and then return to the spacecraft. However, this Leonov went out into space and did a good spacewalk, but he fell into a situation where he could not return to the spacecraft. At that time, the air pressure inside the spacecraft and the air pressure in space were different, so the spacesuit was inflated. In addition, it is said that the airlock at the time was designed so well that one person could barely pass through it with an alert posture. At that time, Leonov must have been very embarrassed. The spacesuit is inflated, and you can't even enter through the airlock. Even if you re-enter Earth, you will die unconditionally. Doesn't it seem like there's no way to do this? In the end, Leonov fights to the death for almost 20 minutes and then uses his wit to risk his life. It's just depressurizing the spacesuit and letting the air out. It was a situation where you had to pull out not only a little bit of air, but almost a vacuum level. In the end, Leonov had no more options, so he was able to depressurize the suit and get back into the spacecraft. This choice was really risky, but in the end it was the right choice. At this time, Leonov showed symptoms of diving sickness due to the rapid decompression, but his survival was said to be normal. I just showed you two cases like this, and fortunately, there were no problems with survival in both cases. However, it is said that prolonged exposure to a vacuum or rapid changes in large atmospheric pressure is very dangerous. First of all, if more than 15 seconds pass in a vacuum, the oxygen-deprived blood from the lungs reaches the brain and passes out. If pressure is not restored and oxygen is not supplied within 1 to 2 minutes after fainting, brain damage occurs and recovery is difficult. It's like suffocation. Someone might ask this question. I heard that freedivers hold their breath underwater. Shouldn't we also hold our breath in a vacuum? By the way, rather, holding your breath in a vacuum can cause permanent lung damage. That's not the right way. If you hold your breath, the gas cannot escape through your nose or mouth. When this happens, the gas pressure that cannot escape from the body overinflates the lungs and causes damage. This process is very instantaneous, taking only 0.5 to 2 seconds. The lungs are completely destroyed in an instant. When I see people who have passed out after holding their breath in a vacuum, and now wake up, they say that they are really in pain because they are coughing continuously for a long time and cannot breathe deeply. In addition, Exposure to a vacuum often causes fainting and cardiac arrest at the same time. In this case, it is said that there are cases where the pressure is immediately restored and CPR is not recovered and death occurs. Then, what would happen if it was not in the middle of space but 600 kilometers above the Earth? Temperatures 600 kilometers above the Earth range from minus 100 degrees Celsius to over 125 degrees Celsius. 
No, why the hell is the temperature difference so extreme? There is very little air in space, so the temperature difference is extreme. During the day, the small remaining oxygen and nitrogen particles absorb the high-energy solar radiation. As it is, the absorption temperature rises rapidly. But at night I don't get this energy. The temperature drops considerably. So, if we fall into this environment, even if it is a vacuum and heat conduction is poor, if we are exposed to minus 100 degrees Celsius for a long time, we will gradually lose body heat and eventually die from hypothermia. Now, what would happen if a person were tossed into outer space in this way? We explored the question together. To sum it up, you could suffocate with your lungs ripped and have a heart attack, your body fluids boil and your skin burns and you lose all the heat and you could even get cancer. And on the surface, it would look like a frozen mummy due to heat loss and water loss, and it would die. And no matter how painfully you shout right before you die, no sound will leak out, so you will go to the other world really lonely. Today, we took a scientific approach to a situation we once imagined while watching a movie or drama. Please share your thoughts in the comments. It was an odd RESERCH that tells you about science you've been curious about at least once. If you enjoyed watching, please subscribe and like.